So here, beta, in your previous class, that I explained that you relate, related to of reacting mass calculation. That means uh, in which one that uh, if mass of reactant that is given and mass of product that is given, and then with respect to unitary method, they are asking that either if any amount of reactant or product is given, so what your product or reactant will be. Okay. Yeah, so first one was that one. Secondly, uh, yeah, product mass calculation, this type of question also that I explained that. Okay, so means this type of questions are totally related to means unitary method. Okay, these questions are totally based on unitary method. Okay, because you can see that a little bit that I can explain that to you. Here you can see that when 5 gram of calcium carbonate <coughs> is decomposed by heating, it produces 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide. Always remember that when means uh, metallic carbonate or metallic bicarbonate, okay, they will react. Yeah. Yeah then they will produce carbon dioxide okay oh so for them to produce carbon dioxide it has to react first pardon if it, reacts, if it reacts and then if it reacts then only it can produce carbon dioxide yes 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 that's what i am saying that if carbon dioxide is producing as a product then clearly you have to think in your mind that either the reactant will be carbonate or bicarbonate okay always and then in the same way that means they are asking that when 5 gram of calcium carbonate is decomposing in the presence of heat they are producing 2.2 gram of carbon dioxide again they are asking that what mass of carbon calcium carbonate will be needed to produce it 0.8 gram of carbon dioxide also that in the same way that here also we will apply a neutral method to solve this type of question I explained that one do you see your video what I had uploaded uh, I got the notification of it but I don't have time to see it okay no problem in your free time just try to see that now the third topic which I had explained that to you that was your means more reacting mass calculation the mass of product or reactant can be calculated by using the balance equation means suppose that if any type of equation that will be given to you so and if you want to find the find the unknown mass okay so unknown mass and relative formula mass that is given first of all that I explained that to you what is relative formula mass so that means the relative formula mass of any substance that is defined as the ratio of the mass of the substance with respect to the mass one by mass of 1 by 12 of carbon 12 okay that oh. is our relative molecule relative formula mass okay mm -hmm. yeah so uh, relative formula mass in there yeah, that's are represented by uh, mr here okay so okay. a known mass that is the formula is that known mass divided by relative formula mass and uh, multiplied by total MR of unknown substance okay then you will get yeah. an answer understand yeah here you can see that one example that means verbally I am explaining that because in your previous class that I explained that to you so here calculate the mass of Fe that can be extracted from 8 gram of Fe2O3 in the reaction with carbon so first of all that you have to react Fe2O3 and C, okay? 
Yeah. So iron oxide plus carbon dioxide that you will get there. <coughs> or simply, oh yes, but not of iron oxide, simply iron and carbon dioxide that you will get there. And then again, that the proportion method that you have to apply over there, 8 gram, when 8 gram of iron oxide was there, so they are asking the amount of iron there. So fundamentally you have to write that, firstly you have to balance your equation, okay? You are seeing that here, they are balancing equation, okay? Mm -hmm. By 2. Yep. Yeah, here you can see that by 3. And here again that 4. And then here is 3. Balancing that means, remember, that I explained that to you that balancing means the number of rea number of uh, reactant okay or amount of reactant that should be equals to the amount of product okay yeah, yeah. okay yes in this way that you will be able to balance okay, each and every reaction <coughs> When you will mm -hmm. balance, then fundamentally you have to write. So here you are seeing that uh, 8 gram of Fe. So firstly, just to see that how much formula mass of Fe. So that means Fe that is uh, Fe2. That is, I think, 56, uh, 16. Fe2, I, 15... Uh, 68 8 times 79 point something that will be that is 82 is 160 okay yeah, and yeah. O3 so formula mass of Fe2O3 that will be 160 that will be multiplied by 2 okay mm -hmm. yeah here beta 160 that is your formula mass of Fe2O3 okay Fe I yeah. think that 56 or 57 that's formula mass and 56 multiplied by 2 plus uh, 16 times 3 okay so yep, yep. 48 will be this one and yes and 56 times or 57 times you have to do that 2 and then you have to you will get 160 and then the whole thing that will be divided multiplied by 2 to get the actual mass of your reactant okay so then you will get 320 so fundamental thing is that when there becomes 320 gram of Fe2O3 then you are receiving 4 times 56 that is 224 gram of iron okay oh, okay <coughs> So when you, there will be 8 grams, so how many, how much Fe that you will receive, the same type of means proportion method that you have to apply and then you will get your answer, okay? Yep. yep. Great. Do you understand that? Yep, yep, yes. Yeah, now we have to change the screen. Give me a second. Yeah. Next one is your mole calculation. Mole calculation in solution. Solution, as usual, you know that the combination of solute and solvent that is defined as solution. First of all, that solute that means which you are dissolving. Okay. And solvent that means in which you are dissolving okay so just to understand in the best way of solute and solvent you can take example of sugar solution okay in sugar solution clearly you can see that in sugar solution clearly you can see that sugar you are dissolving in water okay so that means sugar will be your reactant and water will be, sorry, sugar will be your means uh, solute because you are dissolving that and water is your solvent, okay? That's why that yeah, yeah. of 
combination of sugar and water that will make sugar solution okay understand yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. give me one second give me one second i'm coming I'm back. Yes. So here, beta concentration. That means concentration. What you are seeing here, concentration. That means how much amount of solute that is present in solvent. Okay. Or if okay. We, yeah, you can also understand that if there is a sugar solution. And then of zinc sugar solution, anyone would like to ask that uh, how much amount of sugar that you had drawn in this one. So then in that condition that he or she is asking about concentration. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, always remember that amount of solute in solution that is known as concentration. Okay unit of concentration that is always mole per dm cube okay yeah yeah for simply you can understand that amount in mole is amount of solute in moles okay divided by volume of solution in dm cube or decimeter cube okay always okay. remember that when centimeter cube Okay, divide the volume of centimeter cube by 1000 to convert that in dm cube. Okay, or if the volume yeah. is given in dm cube, then you can multiply that by 1000 to convert that into centimeter cube. Okay, yeah, yeah, because uh, I explained all these to you in your previous class, that's why that I am not writing on a screen verbally that I am explaining that to you. Yeah, here you can see that clearly it is written divide the volume which is given in centimeter cube by 1000 <coughs> to convert that into dm cube but suppose that if volume is given in dm cube then then you have to multiply that by 1000 to convert that into centimeter cube clear yeah yeah, yeah. also means I explained that to you that is the fundamental formula that is concentration equals to vol means moles of solute divided by volume of solute solution okay okay so means c c equals to m by v okay c equals mm -hmm. to m by v and regarding to that one i explained that to you in your previous class that you would like to form three formulas over there okay yeah we yeah. suppose that fundamentally that is your concentration equals to mole of solute upon volume of solution okay so then next if 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 number of moles that you want to calculate and uh, uh, concentration and volume that is given to you so simply moles moles of solute equals to concentration multiplied by okay concentration multiplied by volume of solvent okay yeah, yeah. and uh, if you want to get yeah here you can see that first question that is simple 0 0.5 mole of solute is dissolved into 50 centimeter cube of solution okay yeah, so yeah. they are asking what is concentration so you have simply you have to apply the formula of concentration so that means concentration equals to moles of solute divided by volume of solution so clearly moles of solute that is given 0.5 beta okay 
and volume yeah, that yeah. is given to 50 centimeter cube beta it is given in centimeter cube you have to divide that by 1000 to convert that into decimeter cube okay yeah yes because until or unless if you not convert each and every quantity in a standard form it is not possible it, it will not be possible to uh, get your answer correctly okay yeah yeah simply means mostly 90 percent of students they would like to do so that uh, uh, in the place of amount of moles of solute they would like to plug in 0 0.5 and in the place of volume they would like to plug in 250 okay but they didn't yeah. care about centimeter cube and in this way that when their question would like to wrong they would like to say that sir i did write that i don't know that why that is wrong so that will be wrong because if you will not convert everything into standard form then question will wrong 100 percent okay yeah, yeah. Are you understanding that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next is your if you want to calculate the amount of solute. Okay. Suppose that if you if you want to calculate that amount of solute, so amount of solute it means that <coughs> <coughs> amount of solute that means. Uh, uh, formula will be like a concentration into volume just I explained that to you okay so that means uh, another type of question that will be given over here yeah suppose that it is given like calculate the amount of solute dissolve in 2 decimeter cube of uh, 0 0.1 mole per dm cube solution so what is given here you have to see carefully what your question is given and then you have to consider what they are asking <coughs> <coughs> sorry i don't know that a little bit that problem is in my throat so here that means they are asking about what a amount of solute and they are giving 2 dm cube that is it is your volume and here 0 0.1 mole per dm cube that is your concentration okay yeah understand yeah so now again you have to apply the same formula what i explained that to you and you will get your answer so amount of solute that is volume multiplied by concentration yeah, 0 0.1 times 2 it will be 0 0.2 mole per dm cube okay oh, okay next is your calculating volume oh yes suppose that if concentration is given and amount of solute is given and then you have to find uh, volume so again that your fundamental formula you have to subject to volume so volume equals to amount of solute divided by concentration simple okay yeah again i am repeating that if concentration will be given and amount of solute will be given and if in question uh, they will ask that uh, find the volume of solution so the fundamental formula of getting volume of solution is volume of solution equals to means some moles of solute divided by concentration okay yeah yes so question i think that is also given here yeah so here they are giving a question that calculate the volume yeah calculate the volume of a 2 mole per dm cube okay 2 mole per dm cube that means concentration is given here okay 
Yeah. Yeah. And are you understanding all that which I am explaining to you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything that I am explaining here in written means in verbally means oral. That I explained that to you in your previous class. You can see its video in the same topic mole concept. Okay, I explained all these type of questions have written over there. Okay, so I don't think that I have to explain that in written. So where there will be a new topic, then again I will explain that in written. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see that the, here it, it is given concentration, concentration. How will you how will you consider that what is given? So with the help of uh, units, okay, with the help of units mm -hmm. that is given to you, you will understand that what is given. So here you are seeing that it is given two mole per dm cube. So mole per dm cube it is your concentration. So concentration is given. And uh, yeah, so 0 0.5 mole of solute, okay? Yes. And solute is given. Oh yes, clearly you can understand that here concentration is given, mole of solute is given. They are asking volume. So volume of solution equals to mole of solute divided by concentration simply, and you will get your answer, okay? Yeah. Understand, Yeah, I understand. Great. Yeah, here you can see that I am showing you also answer. Volume equals to 0 0.5 divided by 2 that you get that you are getting 0 0.25 dm cube or not. Just before I explain that, if you will get your volume in dm cube, so <coughs> Your answer will be means after getting in dm cube, you have to convert that into centimeter cube. So you have to multiply that by thousand. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's the rule. That's the rule. If any volume that is given in centimeter cube, you have to convert that into decimeter dm cube you have to divide that by th thousand okay and if that is given in dm cube and you have to convert that into centimeter cube then you have to multiply that thousand okay yeah understand that yeah, yeah, yeah. great yeah always remember that concentration that is denoted by gram per decimeter cube okay? okay yeah you can see that here is also written concentration that can be expressed in gram per decimeter cube okay <coughs> and then yeah to convert two quantities yeah here you can see that if that is given mole per decimeter cube and you have to convert that into gram per decimeter cube you have to multiply by mr okay and okay, if okay. that is given in gram per decimeter cube you have to convert that into mole per decimeter cube then you have to divide that by mr okay yeah, yeah. it's important now come to the third do you understand what I explained to you? I did. Great. Okay. Hold on. Oh, sorry, I think that I didn't change your page. But I change your page. Uh, No, 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 that's, the, we were on third page, we have to move on fourth page. That's why I was thinking that I changed the page, but it didn't change. Yeah. Next is your percentage yield. Percentage yield, that means whatever amount of reactant that will be given, okay, it is mm -hmm. possible. 
it, yeah, it will be possible to calculate the maximum amount of product, okay, or maximum okay. mass, maximum mass of product that can be made, okay. You can also understand in this way. Suppose that if there is any function or any anything, any type of a special occasion at your place, then always that your mom would like to make. A, different delicious disease uh, different delicious food okay yeah so suppose that uh, he want to make puri okay okay so in that condition that uh, how much um what we can say that uh, hold on give me one second what we can say of that um, how much material that she would like to take okay she have the type of tendency to consume all the amount okay of making that okay why because that if there will be some little bit remains then where she would like to place that uh, miss it directly that she can place that in freeze or a refrigerator but if in that condition that will be one day or two day before before okay so that will not that will mm -hmm. not be in a fresh stage okay so that's why mm -hmm. that here percentage yield means what so whatever reactant will be first of all you have to consider that how much maximum amount of product that can be formed by it okay <coughs> understand yes this mass is known as predicted yield okay mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah predicted yield that is also known as okay means theoretical yield okay means a little yeah. bit you can predict that how many puris that your mom can prepare okay with the help of whatever material that she have okay yeah yes so in that condition that is your theoretical yield theoretical mean yield means by theory that uh, you are thinking about that okay so okay. The theoretical yield that means suppose that she is thinking that okay whatever amount of um, uh, oh wait that's a very good name wait that is coming on that is on my tongue wait a second um what we can say that of Ata wait. Oh my god. That's a very common name which we generally use to define. Um means I, I'm not I I'm not remembering that one at this time. Okay, you can you can also understand that in this suppose that okay, I'm not Remembering that what is to be said Ata in English, okay, that's a very common, common thing, common name that is. Um, okay, no problem. So you can also take example of like vegetable. Okay, suppose that what you are, yeah, suppose that raw material of vegetable that your mom would like to buy, and then. You would like to go into the kitchen and then you would like to ask your mom, Mom, today is Moharam. Oh, I think yes. I think two or three days after there is Moharam. I think yes. Do you know about Moharam? Yeah, yeah, I know Moharam. Oh, yes, of course. That's your religious festival. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I forget okay. that. Okay. <laughs> So that means in that condition, suppose that two days after your mom would like to prepare delicious food and 100% I'll be in US to come to your place. So, <laughs> and then in that condition, suppose that uh, instantly that she would like to, uh, she would like to say to your father to buy different material okay because then until, until or unless there will be not raw material, so how is it possible to prepare okay the perfect material that is required over there so in that condition suppose that uh, there are almost uh, uh, 
means your father will go to the market and buy vegetable okay and then yeah. when you would like to give your mom in kitchen then a type of question that would like to come in your father's mind that uh, um yeah then your father would like to ask to your mom do you think that uh, how many guests are guests are coming this, these material that are that are sufficient then your mom would like to predict that i think that oftenly that you would like to see this type of incidents in your house okay yes yes means suppose that generally uh, in uh, eid okay our bakrid we generally used to make semai okay i do, i don't know that what is what we have to say in english semai but fundamentally as you are indian a pakistani we generally use semai in the word that is there yeah. so in that condition when your father would like to buy semai in raw mat in raw form okay then he would like to ask to your mom that as usual you are going to prepare different kind of semais okay semaiya in that condition is it can is it possible or whatever material that i bought that is sufficient then your mom will predict that and then she would like to tell your father that either that will be sufficient or not otherwise she would like to say again to your father to go to market and buy some more okay yeah it's yeah. a little bit more amount okay <clears throat> so what your mother would like to means uh, think about okay amount of yeah raw material that is known as your predicted yield beta or that is also known as theoretical yield okay means you are yeah. predicting that you will be able to you will be able to produce or you will be able to prepare this kind of or this amount of material okay by your means reactant okay but suppose that when your mom would like to prepare vegetable or semaiya or means simply puri okay in uh, yeah now here i have to explain that to you in uh, the terms of puri suppose that of seeing that raw material your mom is predicting that uh, it is possible that uh, i'll be able to prepare at least uh, 50 puris okay regarding to how much guests are coming a little bit okay so from 50 puri that suppose that of preparing that uh, you would like to come instantly from the back of your mom okay and yeah you suddenly hug her okay regarding to that okay from the back in that condition she would like to be a little bit surprised of that one and instantly that water puri that will be in her hand that would like to get down okay on floor clear in yeah, yeah so one or two puri that would like to be miss um, get rough in this manner and suppose that by her own one or two puri of placing that into into that miss any type of into any type of means uh, utensil in which your mom is placing all the puris suppose that of placing all the puris when there will be a type of herd over there okay <laughs> when there will be a type of uh, yeah means uh, when all the all the puris that will be one over another so, so in that condition that would like to increase in height and 100% possibility will be that when your mom would like to place next puri and 100% it would like to slip over there okay so it may be possible that some other puri sir also would like to come down okay on earth on earth or miss on floor so in that condition suppose that she was predicting of 50 puris and now only 46 puris are available for your guest okay yeah sometimes a student would like to think about that what i am explaining to them but no i am explaining the fundamental fact of understanding percentage uh, sorry theoretical yield and actual yield so theoretical yield is what when your father 
or when you ask to your mom that how much amount of puri that you will be able to prepare of this raw material okay then yeah. your mom would like to predict that i would like to make or it is yeah maximum possibility that there will be that uh, i'll be able to prepare at least 50 puri is okay then you will say great okay then your mom will start to prepare and uh, almost miss first of all that it is not possible that uh, overall 50 puri is that will be there okay suppose that there will be 52 puri is there okay okay and then by incidence that uh, three or four puri is that get down on floor okay so that means it is not possible that you would like to serve that puri to your guest okay so okay. in that condition only the available amount of or available number of puri is that will be 48 or not Oh yeah, oh, yeah. puri. Yeah, because four puri is as I am telling you that 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 will come down, okay, or that will get down on floor. So that means only there will be available number of puri is that will be forty eight. So predicted yield or theoretical yield that will be your number of puri is that your mom predicted, okay, and. how many puris that are now available for your guest that is your that is your means uh, actual yield okay oh okay yes actual yield that means how much how much finally that is available to consume okay that is your actual yield understand yeah yeah i understand and when the ratio of actual yield to theoretical yield multiplied by 100 then you'll be able to get percentage yield okay, okay. <coughs> so here clearly you can see that the formula is given to you oh sorry yeah the percentage yield that is given yeah here this light blue color whatever that is covered the percentage yield that is yield obtained upon theoretical yield times 100 okay for example yeah, yeah. yeah you can understand in very convenient way that if the predicted yield is 20 g okay but yeah. the actual yield is 15 g yeah because that you are predicting you are predicting that i would like to prepare 20 g of milk shake okay or 20 okay. liter of milk shake okay whatever mm -hmm. amount of yeah whatever amount of milk that is available at your place okay and oh, okay. uh, yeah unfortunately that your elder sister that came and then she would like to get some amount of milk from there okay so okay. that means a little bit quantity will reduce okay so that means in that way suppose that only 15 okay 20 liter okay or 20 g of milk is there okay i am miss not in grams we can assume that in liter so 20 liter that is available <laughs> but you are consuming only 15 liter okay because the little okay. bit amount that you would like to have <coughs> in a, yeah uh, only 15 liter that you will consume there so 15 liter that will be your actual yield okay and 20 liter that will be your predicted yield okay do you understand that yeah yeah great yes so in america this type of question that would like to come beta because percentage yield theoretical yield and all that okay but here i think in india there are in few states book there is this type of concept over there other otherwise uh, mm, yeah here is not this concept percentage yeah percentage composition that is there yes 
percentage composition that is the simple concept that uh, you can also understand in that we may suppose that if there is your test okay if there is your test and uh, you would like to you would like to uh, and your test is of 50 marks okay so out of 50 marks okay then your father would like to ask that uh, how many marks would you like to get okay then a little mm -hmm. bit you will predict that okay that yes that yeah. I would like to get 45 marks or 48 marks or overall 50 marks okay mm -hmm. you are predicting that okay but uh, when your result will come then you will be able to understand that what actual amount of okay or what actual number that you will get there okay and then you can get you can you can obtain your percentage or not yes because yeah, percentage yeah. yeah simply percentage formula is that number obtained upon total number multiplied by 100 clear yeah now you can i think that you can understand this one what is here percentage yield that is yield obtained upon theoretical yield multiplied by 100 okay Okay. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. So now, losing product. Losing product means what? Means 100% you have to understand that whatever amount of raw material that you will have, it is not possible that the same amount of product that you will get. No, 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 no. It is not possible okay suppose that if your mom is preparing milkshake okay and she is using 20 liter of milk okay so it is not possible yeah. that she will be able to prepare overall 20 liter of milk no why because I are that's a common configuration that 20 liter will be milk there a little bit sugar will be there okay a little bit flavored drink will be there okay when all these would like to combine so 100% that you will get the maximum amount of milkshake okay that means in spite of in sp when suppose that in starting your mom is using 20 liter of milk but when she would like to prepare uh, milkshake then 100% that uh, means so finally your prepared milkshake that will be suppose that you can consider like um, 21 liter or 21 and a half liter or maximum 22 liter okay so predicted predicted amount that is your theoretical yield okay I, okay that is your 20 and suppose that your mom had prepared 22 liter of milkshake so 22 liter that is your actual yield okay yeah so now if they would like to ask that percentage percentage yield so you have to do simply that uh, actual yield upon theoretical yield multiplied by 100 that's it so that's why that here you are seeing that predicted yield that is 20 gram okay predicted yield that is 20 gram but actual yield they are giving that 15 gram okay mm -hmm. means you can also understand in this but it is very important in america or in your syllabus this question will come that's why i'm repeating in many, many times to you okay just as to explain you that what does it mean okay so you can also understand that suppose that you bought a cup from the market okay okay you are okay. thinking that there will be 20 gram of sugar okay or it can hold 20 gram of sugar okay and then you start to place sugar in that one in that one okay but then you would like to see that in spite of 20 gram there is 18 or 17 gram of sugar okay understand yeah, yeah. So predicted yield that is your 20 gram and your actual yield that is your 17 gram okay 
Mm-hmm. Now yeah. you are understanding. Mm-hmm. And then, if you will get these two quantities, and then you will multiply that by hundred, means that means actual yield upon actual yield that is seventeen, original. Or predicted yield that is your 20. So 17 up divided by 20 multiplied by 100. So that means in that condition you will get 85 percent. Okay, that is your percentage yield. Understand? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's why I am saying that means uh, suppose that losing product. Yeah, main uh, your topic is that losing product. Losing product that means. Uh, when you would like to prepare something, okay, so 100% possibility will be there that you will not be able to get that uh, how much you would like to predict about the amount of product, okay. Means suppose uh-huh. that if you are if if you are taking if you are taking 100 gram of any object or re- reactant. So it is not possible that you will get the hundred gram of product. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So what does it mean? It means that a hundred percent, a little bit amount that will be wasted. Okay. okay. That's why there are several reasons why the percentage yield of the product might be less than. 100%. Yes, yes. Because, beta, simple understanding is that means if you are getting 100, 100 gram of raw material, okay, or 100 gram yeah, of, 100 gram of, uh, oh my god, loaf that is. <laughs> yeah, last 15 minutes I am thinking about that. What we have to say that, Ata, loaf. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know about loaf? Yeah, generally bakers would like to use that loaf or bread material. L O A F. Loaf. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my God! Then why you do? Why you didn't tell me that, sir? That that is known as loaf. <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, it is loaf. Loaves of bread, people like loaves of bread, slices of bread. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But a bread material, <laughs> when would like to be in unprepared means in means starting in starting form, then we can consider as loaf. Suppose that hundred gram of loaf is there, or five half kg of loaf is there. So when you would when you will tend to prepare uh, means chapatis or bread then it is not possible that when you will prepare when you will consume all the amount of loaf okay then it is not possible that the amount of reactant that will be equals to the amount of product no because because what why because a little bit product that will lose its amount while when filtering okay or suppose that any type of liquid material you are using so a little bit amount of that uh, yeah we suppose that if you are if you are preparing milkshake okay 20 liter of milkshake that you are using but 100 percent possibility will be that a little bit amount of uh, milk while preparing it would like to f- splash okay surrounding okay so that means it is not yeah. means either 200 gram of milk that will splash but it is not possible to get 20 liter of milkshake no additionally you have to include another amount in that one to get exactly 20 liter of milk you know but suppose that if you are thinking that of uh, using 20 liter of milk milk you will you will be able to prepare 20 liter of milkshake no 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 never it will be because always remember that how much amount of reactant you are using it is not possible to find the same amount of product okay yeah but fundamentally that conservation of mass that states that whatever will be the amount of reactant 
the amount of product that will be same you know yeah there's um, oh, but yeah, yeah. yeah but that is that is theoretical concept okay theoretical concept that yeah that means uh, actually scientists also have a type of theory or also have a type of strategy to explain each and everything in a standard form you know yeah also, yeah suppose that if you are using 20 liter of milk and you are preparing a 19.6 or 19.7 liter of milk okay but yeah so uh, if anyone would like to ask you uh, precisely that what is the amount then precise value that is 19.6 okay but if he will not ask to you about precise value and then simply or roughly he would like to ask you that how much milk shake that you prepared then yes again you will say that i had prepared 20 liter of milk shake okay understand yeah so when whatever amount of reactant you are lose you are using okay there will be a little bit loss when filtering okay there will be loss when evaporating yes that's right and also there will be loss there will be loss wait hold on there will be loss when transferring liquids okay and also the last one that means not all reactants are reacting to make product okay yeah some reactants would like to take part in chemical reaction but they do not combine with reactant to form product these type of components or these type of substances are known as catalyst okay and yeah, catalyst catalyst yeah i am talking about catalyst catalyst are the substances which alter the rate of reaction okay but they yeah. do not take Are part in different? chemical reaction understand they alter the rate of reaction uh, okay. yeah alter that means they can increase or decrease the amount of product okay oh okay always remember that if you would like to increase the fast process okay or if you would like to increase the process fast okay in that condition mm -hmm. that less amount of product that you will get there okay yes because yeah. that a large amount of reactant that will consume over there as a waste okay and yeah. less amount of product that you will get over there okay Yeah. Clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, percentage purity. The last thing that I am telling you here, beta. Percentage purity. That means, uh, out of hundred, how much amount of pure material that you are getting there? Okay. That is known as percentage yeah. purity. Okay. Or you can also understand in this way. Suppose that 20 liter of milk that you are uh, getting, and out of that one you are getting that uh, suppose that uh, 21.4 liter of milkshake. Okay. Now the okay. basic important thing is that you took there, you took there 20 liter of milk milk. Okay. but now you are preparing 21.6 liter of milk shake so percentage purity that is another concept which you have to understand that because that 100% when your milk shake would like to be prepared then that will not be pure why because there will be additional amount of sugar and flavor component and all that okay so what does it mean there will be not as means there will be not is only uh, milk okay 
a little bit amount of sugar a little bit amount of water and a little bit of our amount of flavored drink okay yeah that you would like to include there and then finally you will be able to prepare milkshake okay understand mm -hmm. yes means if you want to increase the amount of product then always remember that you have to add a little bit ingredient like water or some other okay in that one yeah, yeah. okay understand beta yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes so i explain all the four pages to you beta in your next class that uh, do you understand all that which i had explained that to you yeah i understand clearly yeah here beta of uh, last two pages there was nothing which i have to explain in written okay that's why that i explained that in oral okay i hope you understand everything huh yeah yeah, yeah i understand yes because in that way it will be much convenient for you to understand that i will upload your class within few hours okay i'll upload your okay. class within few hours on your side there is a night or evening when you will be get up early in morning then you will see your class will be on the channel okay so lastly i am asking to do understand clearly about means uh, theoretical yield and actual yield yeah, yeah. and all that again i am repeating a little bit theoretical yield is that means a prediction that is okay prediction of product okay simple in simple mm -hmm. way you can understand that okay theoretical yield that means prediction of product okay prediction of amount of product and actual yield that means actual yield that means how much product how much amount of product you are getting in real okay and then when yeah. you will, when you will place the ratio and when you will simplify that you will get your percentage yield okay uh -huh. so beta you have to revise what we are explain to it to you and then if there will be any problem then you can ask me in your next class okay please i am requesting that if you have free time just go to my channel and you can see your videos of previous classes okay and then in this way you will get efficiency yeah and also i am requesting one more thing that if you friends are there also you can also suggest them my channel name okay so that they can also be able to get the knowledge of that one it's a good it's a good thing and it's a good work okay so thanks for today have a great time beta and greetings to your parents thanks a lot bye bye all right thank you sir bye